Hi everyone, this is Grace with Make Bull Head Better. And today I got to interview Bo Hellams, who is a lifeguard that serves on the Colorado River on the weekends. And it was a really great interview with some really good insight. So let's get into this interview. What do you have going on? Found somebody in the water. He is swimming. By the yellow jet ski, somebody is just picking him up. What's the location? Jet ski's on the other side over by one. <laughs> what color jet ski? Not sure yet. I don't know that. Bo Hellams. I'm a part of the water rescue and safety team. I'm known as a lifeguard or water rescue, whatever you like to call us by. But that's what we do is primarily perform aquatic rescues to keep our shoreline safe from Rotary Park all the way up to Davis Dam. And kind of the day-to-day -day operations is riding skis, making sure swimmers are safe uh, along the shoreline in our swim zones, as well as on the jet skis, rental or personal. Sorry, I'm a little out of breath. Um, <laughs> We monitor the no wake zone and we try to enforce as much as we can or to the best of our abilities. But primarily our duty is to go towards medical aids or respond directly to distressed swimmers, whatever that be, off a jet ski or along the beach. What? So our service is going to affect, okay, Memorial to the second weekend in September, I believe. And that stretch allows us to mitigate that summer traffic that comes into our region. We start around 11 o'clock in the morning and that means like feet on deck, ready to go. Uh, which means the day for a lot of these guards that are transferring from Southern California or even guards that are local, uh, we're reporting to headquarters around 10, 10.30 to get our day started. All our equipment taken care of and skis fueled up and prepped for the day. And then we're on the water depending on if it's a major day or not. Uh, sometimes as late as eight o'clock, but we're shooting that six, seven, eight range depending on visibility or visitation on the water. How many lifeguards do you have on the water at any given time? Six is our general operations. We run three skis, two lifeguards on each ski. On a ski, you'll notice we have an operator and then a rescuer. The rescuer, if the operator is, is able to, drive the rescuer directly to the scene and kind of direct the rescue from the back of the jet ski without having to enter the water. If entering the water is something that needs to happen, we can mitigate the rescue by deploying our rescuer and then maintaining a safe zone with the jet ski or the operator around the jet ski. Some of the advice that I would recommend is really focusing on, the river is just like a road. So when you're driving your jet ski and you're going against traffic or you're not staying to the right hand side the majority of the time, what you're doing is causing an obstruction to oncoming traffic and that creates jet skis to have to split or kind of create this diversion in what should not be the normal road. And that opposite way of traffic causes other people to enter into another opposite way of traffic or onto the oncoming traffic. And that seems to be where we see a lot of our incidents and accidents take place. So when you're operating on the jet or on the river with a jet ski, what we recommend is think of it very much so like a road. When people are slowing down in front of you, start to break, give yourself time. When people are speeding up, try to maintain that speed on the river too, because a stop and go, stop and go, stop and go is kind of what happens and causes traffic and incidents. It's just like it does on a highway. Um, one of the big things that we see, I mean, even if we look out here right now, you have jet skis like like that one just flipped over right now when you are going slow or slow at speed and you lean one way or the other someone behind you or in front of you could create counterweight and they flip your ski over and then getting back on can be difficult at times so if you stay trying to board from the backside, and then you just had another one flip over there right in the mm. right in the center so again we're winded just because we pulled another rescue but if you look north Sammy, Glenn, Sammy. If you look north, you have three right in front of you. Um, give me one second. Lifeguard one to River Rescue one. River one, you have a rescue taking place just north of the launch ramp as well. I see you're with the flip ski, but if you move north after that, you'll be able to mitigate that one too. 
Ten four. I got a baby with us. Ten four. Um, so just just your general operations on the river is very much so like a road. Try to maintain that safe space as you're operating around you, and also try to always have the safety equipment correctly. So all your proper safety equipment to be fitted is the best set for success. When you have your life jacket that one buckle's crossed or not correctly fitted to your body. When you go to fall into the water and you put your arms up, your life jacket can actually slide up and hold your arms from going back down, which then makes it hard to kind of swim or do anything. Like your life jacket's doing its job and keeping you floating. But what we want to see is you to be able, be able to have mobility, get back to your jet ski, be able to right yourself and get back and going again. Falling off a jet ski on the river is not something that should be scared of or that you should be fearful of. That happens quite often. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks for watching this interview, and if you want to find out any more information about Make Full Head Better or how you can be in an interview, just go to my website, email me, text me, and I'll get back with you.